We're nearly halfway through, and the iCarly 2021 continuation's first season is wild, weird, and very binge worthy. Welcome back, everybody. In this video, we're giving you the definitive breakdown of the best episodes iCarly 2021 has to offer. Three, two. Welcome to the new iCarly. Ooh, it looks like she's already got a few viewers. If you're looking for some laid back viewing with a few laughs here and there, then this revival might be the remedy after a long day of work. This revival, specifically tailored for fans of the original, has a lot of cameos and is chock full of nostalgic callbacks. But does that mean the episodes are as good? <laughs> oh, that's right! Airing on the brand new streaming platform Paramount Plus, iCarly 2021 has taken on the weekly episode method, and though you can't binge watch the entire series, you can gush over the first six episodes and see some of the best ones so far. With everything from psycho stalkers and old enemies to drunken birthday parties and bubble wrap dresses, season one has given us a lot to talk about. So which of these six episodes has blown us away? Let's find out. If you're a fan of iCarly, then go ahead and subscribe to our channel for more cool content just like this. Episode 2 I Hate Carly It might seem ironic to kick off this list with an episode titled I Hate Carly, but this one is seriously good. I know you're my hater! Carly, I'm sorry, I can explain. Come on, Melissa. Help me tie him up. <laughs> episode 2 starts to deliver some of the promises made about the show during the promotional tours held early this year. Where the pilot may have floundered with its clunky dialogue and awkward character exchanges, Episode 2 makes up for it. In this episode, the characters really hit their stride, offering hilarious commentary and wacky situations. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! It's Nora Dershlit! Who's Nora Dershlit? She's a lunatic! She kidnapped us and locked us in her basement twice! Episode 2 sees Carly deal with a troll known as I Hate Carly 57. Apparently, this guy's been a Carly hater since the original web show. His trademark statement is do better, and after Carly finishes her bunny makeup tutorial, he strikes again. Don't freak out, but it looks like your hater's back. I hate Carly 57. This episode is great because it has a cute cruddy moment snuck into it. Comment below if you know which moment it is. It's also great because it has two very hilarious characters, Nora Dershlit and Carly's date-slash-hater, Justin. When you watch the series, you start to realize that sometimes the guest stars get the best lines. Nora's mildly neurotic demeanor was 10 times funnier than in the original. This time, she was calmer, but even creepier, precisely because she didn't want to kidnap Carly and the gang and tie them up in her basement. Oh, you know, I was just scaling the side of the building and noticed your window was open, so... Nora acts like how we believe a real-life Stan would behave. A little bizarre, but not full-out crazy. Her constantly hitting on Freddy is also quite funny. Can I take this? No! Can I take this? No. <laughs> Justin, on the other hand, is the guy we hope we never go out with. Imagine falling for your internet troll without knowing it. He's the highlight of this episode simply for his bizarre monologue at the end. When he finally performs on the iCarly show, the spoken word piece he recites not only gives Carly the ick, but it gives the audience a laughing fit. Of my existence. Seeing a grown man snap his fingers while he laments about chemistry and pudding cups is pure genius. The side story with Spencer and Freddy is also sweet if you're looking for some mild bromance. After Spencer blinds himself while trying to pepper spray Nora Dershlit, Freddy agrees to help him out. Freddy! Freddy? No. What? I just want to tell you I love you, man. That's all. The Seinfeld-like sketch didn't go there in terms of crazy scenarios or awkward encounters, but it does provide some light humor. Plus, we almost get to see Spencer on a date. We hope the rich guy will get a girl soon. You're not ready, are you? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Episode 4 I Got Your Back. Okay, okay, this is one of the best episodes because not only is it hilarious, but it mostly features Carly and Harper's friendship, which we hope to see more of as the show progresses. It also shows some positive interaction between Millicent, Carly, and Harper, proving that Millicent isn't just a bitter, disillusioned 10-year-old child. Come on, who doesn't love a little girl time? The ladies watch messy reality TV and reminisce on how Carly and Harper first met. Seeing them bond with their Carper mugs warms our hearts and shows us that this friendship is going to last. I was thinking something totally different. 
Ta-da! This episode really kicks off when Carly is invited to the Seattle Fashion Fest and she needs a new, fresh, and innovative look. You know, something that makes you look like an effortless trailblazer. As Harbert tries her best to style Carly, we see that the two differ greatly when it comes to fashion choices. The show even indulges this audience with a quickly and classically done montage courtesy of Harper's vast wardrobe. Carly wears puffy, fluffy dresses and sleek, sexy numbers. She even puts on a swan dress that distinctly resembles Bjork's biggest red carpet moment. This episode also gives us serious feels when Harper turns Carly's dress from the I Goodbye finale into a hot new outfit. Seeing grown-up Carly walk a red carpet in the same dress she wore to the father-daughter dance years ago was huge. No sudden moves. We live here now. <laughs> The end is particularly funny as Carly gets one of their favorite characters from The Real Widows of Wisconsin to give a shout out to Harper via an app. The woman's snappy comebacks and catchphrases are to die for. Yet another example of the guest star stealing the show. Episode 6, I Am Cursed. Surprise! What have you done? This is the episode that gave us Drunk Freddy and we will be forever grateful. Though the portrayal was a little juvenile and it looked more like Freddy pretending to be drunk than it did Freddy really being drunk, episode 6 is one of the best mostly because it focuses on our main characters and their lives since the original series aired. When Principal Franklin shows up on Carly's doorstep to deliver a letter she wrote to herself 15 years ago, it prompts both her and Freddy to evaluate their lives and what they've gone through. Carly's personality shines a bit more in this episode and her comedic timing is stronger, despite a few stiff line readings and stale delivery. Do any of them have instructions for the Heimlich or CPR? Saving lives is always on trend. Though we would have loved to see them go into more detail about what their hopes were in the past and what has happened since they wrote those letters, we'll settle for Freddy trying to relive his 20s, even though he is still in his 20s. We'd also have loved to hear what was in Sam's letter. This episode sticks out because it shows Carly's stunted ideology about her birthday and the fear she has about turning older. Carly's mini quarter-life crisis is pretty relatable and though she wants to spend the day alone in fear of the birthday curse, her friends rally around her and make sure she has the best time, even though one of her party guests meets an unfortunate end. That's not great. This episode also has Principal Franklin, which is too cool. No word on whether we'll see Mr. Howard or Miss Briggs and Tebow, but seeing good old Principal Franklin toast to Carly with champagne was good enough. Episode 6 is also one of the best because the jokes have improved significantly from the pilot. Harper, Freddy, and Alex Xavier carry the episode, with Alex Xavier's eccentric attitude taking over in every scene he's in. Though it would have been fun to see Freddy get a lot wilder than he did, the moment was light and silly, which mirrors the original show. <laughs> Some moments are more missed than hit, especially with Millicent's character, who hasn't found her place in the cast yet. She's more like the random kid who lives near the Shea apartment than she is Freddy's daughter. The show seems like it would be more carefree and reflective of the lives of young singles in Seattle if there wasn't a kid involved. But we digress. Despite these hiccups, episode 6 gives us something to look forward to, especially after the awkward random robot wedding segment in episode 5. Well, so far so good. Kind of. What do you think about the new season? Have you watched it? Any episodes you feel were left out of this list? Let us know in the comment section below and if you enjoyed this video then give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this. See you in the next one!